You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, welcome to this edition of Be Humane on Pet Life Radio. This is Dr. Robin Gansert. Today, our episode is coming live from American Humane Association's Red Star Rescue Team's deployment to help a New Jersey animal shelter in crisis. You know, our volunteer team from around the country and our 50-foot Lois Pope Red Star Rescue Vehicle, sponsored by Mars Pet Care U.S. and Banfield Pet Hospital, has arrived on the ground this week in New Jersey to help 91 cats and 15 dogs found in deplorable conditions. But Red Star Rescue rescues on the ground to build a better future for these animals in crisis and for thousands of animals in the future in this community. You know, American Humane Association's renowned Red Star Rescue Program has been deployed to Helmeda, New Jersey at the request of the New Jersey Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals to help animals in need following the voluntary receivership of a shelter in New Jersey. And again, this deployment was made possible by Red Star's presenting sponsor, Mars Pet Care U.S., makers of pedigree food for dogs. More than 100 cats and dogs were found in deplorable conditions, and the local council approved a temporary takeover of the shelter following alarming reports of the conditions in the shelter. The animal shelter was quarantined for adoptions after the local health department found unsanitary conditions. A report letter from the SPCA to town officials leveled serious allegations against the shelter, saying simple matters such as who has access to the facility, the lack of cleaning of cages, basic feeding, the commingling of sick and healthy animals, insufficient veterinary care, the lack of disease protocols, the majority of animals thin and emaciated, the need for emergency vet care for some severely sick animals are all a very disturbing nature and require immediate action. That's a direct quote from the recent letter from the SBCA to town officials. Our very own National Director of Humane Intervention Emergency Services, Justin Scally, said it's a serious situation. These animals need rehabilitation and medical care, and the way this shelter operates needs to be overhauled. We're just glad to get our Red Star Rescue Team here so we can begin helping these animals and making changes to how the shelter is run in hopes of benefiting hundreds, if not thousands, of animals in the future. Friends, 50 Feet of Hope arrives. That 50 Feet of Hope is our regional response vehicle based in the state of New Jersey. In addition to our trained team of Red Star volunteers, one you will meet in just a few minutes who flew in from Wyoming to help out the community in New Jersey. The American Humane Association sent along our 50-foot long northeast Lois Pope Red Star Rescue Vehicle. This newest member of the Red Star Rescue Fleet, sponsored by Banfield Pet Hospital, is, is designed and outfitted to provide a wide array of emergency services. And it's staffed by certified and specially trained first responders carrying supplies and equipment that's much needed to shelter animals. This vehicle is based in New Jersey and is dedicated to the region so it can respond to emergencies quickly in the entire Northeast. This is the second time this year, friends, that this Red Star Rescue Team has been deployed to assist a shelter rescue case in New Jersey. You know, in January and February, the Red Star Rescue Team was on the ground assisting the New Jersey SPCA with a response to help some 200 animals at a shelter that lost its way. Our team did everything from cleaning and disinfecting all areas of the facility to walking dogs and to helping that shelter start a new road to recovery and a new road to help save lives, the precious animal lives, and to be a member of the community. Our hearts, and my heart in particular, goes out to these animals, and we'll do whatever we can on behalf of American Humane Association to help them. Special thanks goes out this holiday season to our supporters, friends like you. Philanthropist Lois Pope, who helped us build this vehicle. Mars Pet Care U.S., makers of pedigree food for dogs. Banville Pet Hospital. Zoetis, and other major donors who helped fund this Northeast Regional Response Vehicle used in this shelter deployment. You know, because of friends like these, you, friends, were able to make this happen, to come to the aid of our nation's most vulnerable animals in their times of greatest needs. 
You know, American Humane's Red Star Rescue Program was created in 1916. It's almost 100 years old. And this program was created as this country's very first national animal rescue at the request of the U.S. Secretary of War to rescue wounded war horses on the battlefields of World War I in Europe. Since then, Red Star Rescue has been helping animals of every kind and has been involved in virtually every major disaster relief effort since 9-11, Pearl Harbor, Hurricane Katrina, Joplin, Missouri, Moore, Oklahoma, every major disaster relief effort that you can imagine including Superstorm Sandy that impacted our friends in the Northeast. Over just the past 10 years, Red Star Rescue teams have saved, helped, and sheltered more than 80,000 animals in crisis, including these animals on the ground at this shelter that needs a major makeover this holiday season in New Jersey. Friends, we're on the ground right now, providing life-saving services for 91 cats and 15 dogs. I thank you so much for listening to this episode of Be Humane on Pet Life Radio. We'll be with you right after this brief message with a live report from a shelter in New Jersey, a shelter with an amazing situation in place that we can't imagine, deplorable situation for cats and dogs in crisis. Stay with us. This is Dr. Robin Ganser on Be Humane on Pet Life Radio. We'll be right back. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Dr. Robin Gansard, and thanks so much for tuning in to Be Humane on Pet Life Radio. As we mentioned in our opening, today is a very special report live from a New Jersey animal shelter crisis situation. Our Red Star Rescue Team and leaders and volunteers are on the ground, along with the 50-foot Lois Pope Red Star Rescue Vehicle, which is sponsored by our wonderful friends at Mars Pet Care U.S. and Banfield Pet Hospital. They're there on the ground helping cats and dogs found in deplorable conditions, my friends, and they're there doing incredible, humane hero work. We are joined on the phone live with Justin Scally from our Red Star Rescue team. Justin, how are you today? I'm doing fabulous. How are you, Robin? Wonderful. Justin, you're on the ground there in New Jersey. Can you give our listeners an idea of what you are seeing and what happened when your deployment occurred? Absolutely. So we uh, received a request from the New Jersey SPCA to assist them with a shelter that was in the middle of a true crisis situation. And at the time, there was uh, nearly 200 animals that were in dire straits, animals that were living in poor conditions, animals where uh, there's suspicion of true neglect at the hands of various individuals. So we were called in to help by cleaning and disinfecting the facility, to helping put protocols in place, and really just trying to bring calm in the midst of real emergency at the shelter. And so our team sprung into action very quickly, and we got our volunteer responders who we love so dearly on the ground, along with our fabulous and legendary Red Star Emergency Services team, to really just start getting things in order. And we've been on the ground here since uh, Sunday, working diligently, long hours, uh, trying to get everything in order, working with the staff that have remained, bringing them under our wing train them, to get them in order as far as, you know, the way things need to be done and best practices. And it's worked out very well thus far. Justin, take me back a few months ago. You know, you weren't on the ground, but what can you imagine was happening in that shelter environment? What was going on and what were those employees there facing in terms of conditions? You know, we believe that these animals uh, were in situations where there was a lack of resources, animals that were unfortunately because of a lack of staffing, a lack of basic necessities that these animals weren't provided with, you know, the basic needs that they had. And so I think that it was difficult for staff on a day-to-day basis to basically meet the needs of taking care of these animals. And so it created a situation that wasn't good for either 
humans or animals. And, you know, as you said, you know, it's difficult for me to speculate to a certain extent because I wasn't here. Based on what we're seeing, we do believe that there is a level of neglect, and I think that it was on a variety of levels. And so I'm really, really delighted that we're able to be here today, though, because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for our amazing team coming in and helping the New Jersey SPCA and others to really just make this right, the animals could still be in that horrible situation. Take me through what you see today on the ground with cats and dogs that you are, your team has met for the first time on Sunday. What's happening on the ground for those cats and those dogs, and how many animals is your team impacting right now? You know, while we're here and it's, and it's still late-breaking information, the reality is, is that we're really turning things around very quickly. That's something that our team is really known for, coming in and being professional, instituting change, and doing it quickly and efficiently. And so with this situation, it's no different. And what we found is that the animals who were very scared and frightened, animals that were in need of medical care and rehabilitation, they're turning a corner. And that corner that we're seeing being turned is demonstrated by the fact that these animals are playing, they're jumping around and playing with toys, toys that they may never have had before. And by the end of the day, they're tired, so they're able to get comfortable and they're clean cages and curl up in a blanket or on a bed, feel comfortable knowing that the folks that are here are able to provide for their basic needs. And so I think that that's one thing that's changed. And, you know, the other thing is that we're hearing firsthand from folks the miraculous change that they're seeing in such a short period of time. There's been a lot of hard work from community volunteers. There's also been a lot of hard work amongst a lot of other folks. And we're finally seeing these changes happen, and it's just all inspiring to be here to see it firsthand. Justin, you know, you talked about a shelter in New Jersey that has been under-resourced. You know, you've worked, I know, and I know our listeners need to know that you've worked in the shelter community for a very long time. Justin, tell me, is this the condition? Are many of our local shelters in need of resources, and what can we all do to help? Absolutely. I think that that is, this is a example of, of a national situation in my mind, that there are shelters throughout our country that are not able to have the basic resources or, or not afforded the resources that they need. And so I think that this is a symptom of a much larger issue within the animal sheltering world. There's many different um, best practices in place. There's ways to work together and help each other. But the reality is that there are situations where there's a lack of resources, whether it's intentional or not. And there's also elements of animal cruelty, whether it's intentional or not. So while this investigation continues, we are tasked also with helping these animals and charting the course for making things better for them. And and I can tell you firsthand that I'm seeing it happen right here every minute of every day. Justin, are these animals adoptable? Will there be an opportunity for residents in this community in New Jersey to come open their hearts and homes this holiday season to take these precious kitties and puppies and dogs home with them to open up their home for the holidays? Absolutely. At this point, you know, there are many animals that have been released to rescue groups where they can be placed up for adoption after being spayed and neutered. Some of the animals are still in their rehabilitation process, whether it's medical or behavioral. And so their situations are an ongoing, you know, rehabilitation process. For others, however, they've been released to rescues, like I said, and many of them are already up for adoption. And as far as the actual animals that are here with us right now, the facility remains under quarantine by the local health department. So only animals that are approved for release can be released. So eventually yeah. down the road, you know, some of these additional animals will be available. But for those that have already been cleared for release, they are up for adoption through various different entities already. That's wonderful. And, and I know that if residents are in the local community have any questions about which rescue groups those are, where can they find more information, Justin? How can they reach you to find out where those local rescue groups are? Well, those rescue groups, you know, are listed in various different ways, including we're going to be placing it on, you know, our website uh, to put information about where these animals are located in case folks are, are questioning that. And then also information available through the Helmeta Facebook page if you're looking Perfect. for uh, where the animals are going to be located. 
Justin, I know that you've spoken on this issue this afternoon, and you've just, in my hand, is a press release from you that says these animals, this is quoting you, Justin, from earlier today, these animals need rehabilitation and medical care, and the way this shelter operates needs to be overhauled. We're just glad to get our Red Star team here so we can begin helping these animals and make changes to how the shelter is run in hopes of benefiting hundreds, if not thousands, of animals in the future. Justin, that's such noble work, laudable work, and this holiday season, as I Think about Red Star, and our listeners think about Red Star. We're just really proud to know you and want to thank you for your contributions to these hundreds of animals in crisis today and how you will pay it forward for animals in that community for generations to come. Any closing words before we go to one of your Red Star Rescue Hero volunteers that I understand is on the ground with you today? No, I think that sums it up on my end. I, I, you know, we cannot thank our supporters and enough. I mean, they're because of everyone that's listening today that allows us to be able to do what we do. But another reason why we're able to do what we do is because of our volunteer responders. And our responders, you know, they step away from, from their daily lives to come and help these animals. And so I'd like to turn it over to Colette Thomas, who's one of our fabulous legendary Red Star responders. She's been with us on numerous responders, uh, responses, everything from equine responses to even here today. So I'd love to turn it over to Colette so she can speak to you now to tell you what she's experiencing here on the ground. And Justin, stay close by as we speak with Colette. I'd like to come back to you and talk about the sponsors who allow American Humane Association's Red Star Rescue Program to be on the ground in this holiday season and the resources they provide to us allow you to do this work with your wonderful team. So let's stay, if you could stay close by, we all because uh, I know you're in a disaster and crisis situation. If you could stay close by, we'll get right back to you so we can do a big thank you to our sponsors. But I'd love to meet your Red Star Rescue volunteer. But friends, we have to take a short break here on American Humane's Be Humane, our weekly radio show on Pet Life Radio. We'll be right back with you after this brief message with a Red Star Rescue hero volunteer. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try Audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership Plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to AudibleDeals.com. That's AudibleDeals.com. It's DesignerPetSweaters.com, the latest fashion trends for our furry friends. Hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit DesignerPetSweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. DesignerPetSweaters.com Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika, Kate Abbott, and Petra Burke. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Radio. Oh. Dot com. <laughs>
Welcome back to Be Humane on Pet Life Radio. This is Dr. Robin Gansard, and thank you so much for tuning into this very special episode. We're coming at you live today from a Red Star Rescue response on the ground in New Jersey, a crisis situation at an animal shelter. And our Red Star Rescue team of volunteers and staff are on the ground providing life saving and for these animals that have been found in a situation of neglect. I'm here with Colette, and I'd like to first of all thank our all of our Red Star Rescue volunteers who take their time off to come and volunteer when we're in crisis and disaster mode. And Colette, I want to thank you so much for your 10 years of volunteer service to American Humane Association. Welcome to our show. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure to be here and to help the animals in any way I can. Colette, well, I understand that you flew into New Jersey from Wyoming, and here we are in the holiday season, and it's incredible. You've made this long journey to help a community all across the country and help these animals in crisis. Talk to me a little bit about what you're doing today on the ground in New Jersey. Well, the main thing we're doing is we're helping to get these animals in the condition where they can be adopted and get the shelter back to where it can be functional again. We're helping the staff and training them. I'm a veterinary technician, so I'm helping with the medical end of it and helping get them trained so that they can give the medications and get the animals healthy and ready for adoption. The goal is so that they can be adopted. We're giving them hope, and that's what I've heard a lot from the staff is today especially is that they are so glad we're here because they have hope now. Well, that's beautiful. You're bringing hope and compassion and kindness, all of those words that really are associated with our almost 100-year mission around Red Star Rescue and this vital program. Talk to me a little bit about what you walked into. What did you see when you first walked into this shelter in crisis? It was just kind of (laughs) chaotic. They didn't know exactly. They weren't trained properly, like in giving medications. They weren't getting them properly. They weren't getting them as timely as they needed to be. The animals were getting fed. The cages weren't getting cleaned in the proper way. They were getting cleaned but not disinfected the way they should be and that kind of thing. So lots of issues in terms of cleanliness and just basic functions of a of an animal shelter. Colette, I know you've volunteered for Red Star Rescue for a long time. Have you seen a shelter like this before in your years of volunteering for Red Star Rescue? Um, actually, this is my first shelter deployment like this, so no, I haven't. <laughs> The other ones I've done have not been in a shelter situation. You know, this is, I think, a shelter that's been under-resourced for a long time. And uh, you're there and you're providing resources as part of American Humane Association, which it's important for our listeners to know that our Red Star Rescue program is completely funded through the generosity of donors, allowing us to go into communities that have situations of crisis and not charge. You know, this New Jersey community will not have any charge from American Humane Association for these vital and life-saving services thanks to the donors, listeners like you who are making gifts to the association to allow us to do this work. Colette, as you go in there, tell me about a special dog or cat that's really touched your heart. Oh gosh, it's hard to pick just one. Um, It's so nice now to see that they're playing and they're able to rest and they're fed and that we're, we're nurturing them by petting them, giving interaction with humans, which is awesome. The most that I've seen that's the most positive thing ever is all the education we've done to the staff and how they are growing and they are very thankful we're here and we're thankful that we can be here to help them and to educate them on how to proceed. You know, as I think about this situation, the shelter that's needed support, needed a helping hand this holiday season, I know that has to make you feel good. You've given up your vacation time at work to to be across the country volunteering. So I have to thank you on behalf of all of us at American Humane Association for your significant contributions to building a humane world. Colette, it's quite admirable and we're proud to know you. Well, thank you very much. And it's what I do, as my kids say, and my husband's very supportive of me coming out here, and it's what I do. (laughs) Well, I love what you do, and we all love what you do. You know, speaking of what you do, I have one more question for you, because our listeners have heard that you've been 10 years volunteering for American Humane Association. What was the deployment in disaster or cruelty case that you most remember, and why? Um, Probably the ones that are really, really 
really, really in need of us are like the ones that are starving or somebody who just can't take care of their pets anymore. And it's a big, like a horse rescue that we did that was a, a starving horse case. That was probably my most memorable. And it was so rewarding because those horses now are in great shape. They're being adopted out. And it's just so nice to see them healthy again. And you can't help but cry when they when you get pictures back that, that they're healthy and doing great. And when you saw them, they were laying on the ground almost dead. So I can't even explain it in words. It's just amazing. Were you on the rescue with uh, one of my favorite horses, Scooter? Absolutely. Yeah, gosh. <laughs> yeah, we love Scooter. And we have all been praying and cheering on for a speedy recovery for Scooter. And I understand he's in so much better shape. And that's thanks to the work of you and your colleagues in Red Star Rescue. Yeah, yeah, we were so happy to do it. And it's like I said, it's so nice to see them now. Um, and all the work that we put in has paid off. And they're getting adopted and getting forever homes. And that's the ultimate goal. As I know, it is the ultimate goal for those dogs and cats right now in the New Jersey shelter that you're on the ground helping to rescue. Colette, thank you so much for your contributions to American Humane Association over the past decade. And on behalf of all of us who love animals, this holiday season, we just want to say thank you for being a humane hero. You set an example for all of us to follow and we can do so much more for our communities to make sure our hometown shelters don't get into a situation like this shelter in New Jersey has gotten itself into. So thank you for all you do. And I just want to say happy holidays to you and yours. Happy holidays to you too. Thank you. Well, friends, this is Dr. Robin Ganser on Be Humane on Pet Life Radio. We'll be right back after this brief message with the closing session with Justin Scally live on the scene at a shelter in crisis as he and his Red Star Rescue Team is there to make over the shelter and save hundreds of animals in need. We'll be right back after this brief message. We'll be right back right after these messages. Stay tuned. Hi, this is Tim Link, animal communicator and pet expert and host of Animal Rights on Pet Life Radio. Have you ever wanted to know what your pet is really thinking? Do you want to find out if they truly understand what you're trying to tell them? Ever wish you could build a better understanding and closer relationship with your pet? Well, now you can. Learning to communicate with animals is a four-part on-demand workshop. In the workshop, you'll learn the essential techniques that are necessary to communicate with animals, including what is animal communication, breathing correctly to achieve the perfect state to communicate with your animals at a deeper level, using guided meditation exercises and method to communicate with animals, and how to send and receive information from your animals. So if you're wanting to learn how to communicate and connect with your animals at a deeper level, visit PetLifeRadio.com forward slash workshop and purchase and download Learning to Communicate with Animals. You'll be glad you did. Hey there, pet parents. This is Christy Vaughn, host of The Doggy Dish. Do you love your furry companion? Do you love making him or her healthy treats but can't seem to find the time? Great news. The Doggy Dish is the perfect show for you. Every episode is chock full of healthy and easy recipes that are made with ingredients you most likely have on hand. Tune into The Doggy Dish for yummy and healthy recipes for your canine kids. Every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Be Humane with Dr. Robin Ganser. Thank you so much for listening this week. You know, American Humane Association's Red Star Rescue Team has been on the ground to help a New Jersey animal shelter in crisis. Our volunteer team and our 50-foot Lois Pope Red Star Rescue vehicle has been on the ground thanks to the generous sponsorship of Mars Pet Care U.S., Banfield Pet Hospital, and, of course, our dear friend Lois Pope. You know, it's friends like you, listeners, and friends like Lois and our corporate sponsors, Banfield and Mars Pet Care, that allow Allow us to do this work. And I'm back with you live with Justin Scally, our National Director of Red Star Rescue, to share with us some closing remarks as he and his team are providing life-saving efforts right now on the ground to save these kitties and dogs in crisis. Justin, thanks for joining us again. And thanks again. Any closing thoughts for our listeners about this Red Star Rescue deployment? 
you know, we just want to thank everyone for your support. And it's important to always remember animals, all animals in our lives. And let's remember to be humane this holiday season and always. Justin, that's a beautiful way to end the show this week. You know, our hearts go out to these animals, and we will do whatever we can to help them. Thanks to our supporters, philanthropist Lois Pope, Mars Pet Care U.S., makers of pedigree food for dogs, Banfield Pet Hospital, Zoetis, and other donors who help fund this Northeast Regional Response Truck used in this deployment. We were able to come to the aid of our nation's most vulnerable animals in their times of greatest needs. So thank you, friends, for making this happen. As I think about American Humane Association and just in your work, Red Star Rescue Program was created, literally created, on the battlefields of World War I at the request of the U.S. Secretary of War to rescue wounded war horses on those battlefields in Europe. Since then, we've been rescuing animals of every kind and been involved in virtually every major disaster relief effort from Pearl Harbor to 9-11, Hurricane Katrina. Joplin, Missouri tornadoes, and the tornadoes in Moore, Oklahoma, the Japanese and Haiti earthquakes, and of course, Superstorm Sandy. And over just the past 10 years, Red Star Rescue teams have saved, helped, and sheltered more than 80,000 animals. To follow the news of this shelter in crisis and to support the Red Star Rescue Team's emergency and life-saving work, please visit AmericanHumane.org. Again, this is Dr. Robin Gansert. You've been listening to Red Star Rescue's show, Be Humane, on Pet Life Radio. Thank you so much for listening. Look forward to visiting with you next week. And remember this week and every week, be humane. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.